Hey, welcome to the H2B Report. This is August 15th, 2024. We are about 45 days into the October 2024, October 2025, first half year fiscal cycle for the H2B. This is for visas that are being applied for to start between October 1st, 2024 and March 30th, 2025. So let's look at the numbers to see kind of where we're at and processing. And I do have some good information for you today about when you can expect the cap for this year to be hit. Okay, so up here should be the numbers and I have them on a paper in front of me. I'm in front of a green screen. I don't actually see this. You see this movie magic from 1950. So. Group A right now is sitting at 100% of Group A applications. There were 1,699 applications for 34,621 workers. All 100% have received an NOA, Notice of Action, or Notice of Deficiency. 716 applications for 14,241 workers have been certified, while 20,101 workers representing 983 applications are sitting probably in either an NOD or so, not probably, are sitting either in an NOD that's uh, awaiting a response or awaiting a decision, or are in a recruitment. We don't know how many of those, well, we do know how many of those are in an NOD if we look at the numbers, if we look at the case statuses, so I'll give you some final numbers after this. Okay, the other bit we know is that 420 of the 423 applications from Group B have received an NOD or an NOA, uh, representing 9,061 workers. That means almost all of Group B from those first five days has been processed. And uh, so those are either an NOD or recruitment. So what does that mean? So uh, it means that probably if you have, if you have already received an NOA in Group A or Group B, you are going to get a visa if you get through your recruitment. Uh, right now, we are seeing that if we take into account how many applications are still in a notice of deficiency, which you can tell by case status, and if we look at how many applications are being processed per day as of August 10th, and that's at 84.76 applications are being processed per day, um, as compared to 73.52 applications per day last year, then the first half fiscal cap is being projected by the Seasonal Employment Alliance to end on September 18th. So that means that you have to have your USCIS, USCIS application end by September 18th to meet the cap for new workers. Now, if you're doing an extension on an existing worker or you were, don't mind if you get returning workers, that's not gonna matter. But if you want a new worker, your USCIS application has to be in by September 18th, which is great. That's about 33 days from now, okay? So even if you get accepted today, in contrast to what I said last week, even if you get accepted today and you have 15 days of recruitment, you'll be fine. If you get accepted next week and have 15 days of recruitment, you'll be fine. You're, you know, probably you want a notice of acceptance by about August 25th if you don't count weekends for your recruitment to be able to get it in by September 18th. It's 15 business days of recruitment, if you count Saturday and Sunday uh, as your business days, and then you gotta turn in a recruitment report, get an answer, which can take two, three, sometimes four or five days, and then you gotta get it into USCIS. So realistically, your shortest timeline, you know, is about 21 days from September 18th, but if you're having to count weekends, which a lot of employers do, then you're probably looking at you need to be starting recruitment at the end of this week. So keep that in mind. So you need to be starting your recruitment, let's say if you're counting weekends, right, at the end of this week to safely make it before September 18th. Now, September 18th confirmed? No, it's not confirmed. This is a prediction. I want to be clear on that. Don't hold me liable. But this is the best prediction that we have. Uh, now, some issues that have come up in the program. Um, last year I covered good news, right, with caregiving, nanny applications. One issue that I did highlight that I've seen resolution to is um, I had one client uh, who had a registration number uh, that was removed from their PCLOAD application. And what was really difficult about it being removed is that initially the certifying officer on the NOD under deficiency one, they quoted language from 655.12 Code of Federal Regulations saying, hey, these are the four reasons that we look at, these are the four things we look at to tell you whether there's been a material change to your application that requires us to pull the registration number, but we also look at the application holistically under a court case called Padilla, and 
uh, you know, that's if, if we find that something is obviously wrong in the application, we can also pull the registration number. We got one of those deficiencies on a registered application, even though we didn't break any of the, you know, we didn't go, we, did, we didn't trigger any of the 655.12 language, which hopefully is going to be up here. I'll make sure that Keith has it up here. Um, but then the uh, NOD didn't actually tell us what was wrong in the application. And I went, apo I went uh, apoplectic. Is it apoplectic? Is that yeah. right? And I'm an out of die. I went apoplectic, which means I got mad. And so then I sent an email to the ombudsman. There's an H2B ombudsman. And I sent a request for clarification to the officer. And eventually I sent in the NOD response with under protest explaining why I thought there's no possible way that Padilla, this court case, can stand for the idea that the DOL can just pull a registration without explaining the reason because it just leaves the employer guessing. How are you supposed to know how to fix your application if you're not told what the reason is? You can't just strip it. So uh, thankfully, the H2B ombudsman agreed and had the certifying officer reissue a new notice of deficiency even after we replied where specificity as to the stripping of the registration number was given. Now in this case, that's good, that was a good first step, but what was really interesting and I, th I think a discredit to the DOL a bit here is that the reason given was that the, uh, the officer had gone back into the first application from the previous year and said this shouldn't have been uh, issued under, under this particular category, which is frustrating. Um, because if you've made that kind of mistake, you have to realize that you're dealing with companies that are making million dollar decisions on the basis of these approvals. And so this idea that an officer who's you know, a good person, is working remotely, can go back in, strip a registration number because the DOL itself says it made a mistake on a previous application affecting million dollar deals, you know, in 2024, 2025 on the basis of a mistake that the DOL says they made in 23-24 is a tough one to swallow, probably an actionable one, if I'm being honest. But the fact that such a momentous set of circumstances could occur and in the initial notice of deficiency, the officer didn't even feel like that was important to mention, that's the scary part. So I do think that this registration program sits on somewhat shaky grounds. I think the DOL is testing what its limits are on uh, controlling registrations, being able to strip them. And if, if you have a problem with it, please do reach out because I, we're, I am trying to get an understanding of uh, what is happening with the DOL's interpretations of its powers under Padilla and whether Padilla itself needs to be be, needs to be challenged and uh, modified. So uh, that's what's happening. In other words, if you have a registration number, don't take it for granted because I, I have seen one case in this first year where registration numbers are supposed to kind of create uh, continuity and predictability for employers. I am seeing that that's not always the case. Okay. To recap, September 18th is the anticipated cap from USCIS. You need to have your application at, in USCIS by then. And registration numbers aren't foolproof, even if you meet all of the requirements under 655.12 when you make your second and third year applications under the same registration number that you got in like year one. So that's the H2B report for this week. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this continues to be helpful.